In today's video, we're going to compare the Atomstack A70 70 watt diode laser to this Laguna 100 watt CO2 laser. We'll take a look at things like safety, price, size, what it can do, what it can't do, and just in general how it stacks up to that more expensive machine. These diode lasers have been around for a little while now, and right away I wasn't too impressed with them just because they were quite small and didn't have a lot of power, but once they started getting over 40 watts, I was getting pretty intrigued. And then this email came through from Atomstack that they have a 70 watt diode laser, and it really piqued my interest. I went to their website to check out the stats on this laser, and in the second slide it said, retire your CO2 laser. And then I was like, okay, let's do it. So Atomstack did send this to us to try out. I didn't pay for it, but I have no contract or anything. I can say whatever I want about it, and we're going to take a look at how it performs just in general. I don't have much experience with these diode lasers. I do have an X-Dual 20 watt diode laser, which is fine, but I think these 40 and up lasers are kind of what you're looking for, especially when you can switch the diode laser to half the power and it just gives you so much variety of what you can and can't do. So let's talk safety with diode lasers. I don't think people touch enough on this and as someone that hasn't run a laser ever in the past should know these things, but the blue diode laser light is extremely bad for your eyes. Just walking past it and catching out of the corner of your eye, I kind of like wince. It's almost like looking at a welder. They do provide these glasses, but I don't want to be wearing these all the time in the shop. They're just super annoying. And then smoke. Just cutting things out produces way more smoke than you'd expect. I couldn't imagine cutting out a whole sheet of like ornaments. Just cutting out of several of these circles, there was a noticeable smoke film in the shop. And then radiation. You want this thing enclosed to prevent any I don't know how all that works, but all these lasers are plastered with radiation stickers. My fiber laser and my CO2 laser both have radiation stickers on them. So a lot of this could be cured with an enclosure. Whether you buy it or build it, I don't know. But this machine is $1,700 and then the bigger version is $2,000. So I would budget for making or buying some type of enclosure just to protect your eyes and vent that smoke and fumes outside. Another thing with lasers, you should never leave them unattended. I would not let this run cutting out something and go to the house and just hang out for a couple hours. This thing does have a load of safety features. It has an anti-tilt feature, which if I don't know why you'd be tilting it around, but if you tilt it up, it'll automatically shut off. It also has flame detection. Uh, I haven't tried that. And it also has some other features that states that you can, you can find all that on their website, but it does have a lot of built-in safety features to make it a little bit safer. When it comes to safety with the CO2 laser, I feel a lot better. The overall machine is enclosed, and then the fumes are extracted outside. So just that, first of all, is so much better. Then you have the laser itself is enclosed again in this machine. And looking at it, it's not as damaging for your eyes. I still wouldn't look at it, but seeing it in your peripheral, it's not going to be as harmful as the diode, which is just out in the open and a lot brighter. When it comes to safety as far as leaving it unattended, I still wouldn't leave it completely unattended, but I feel better and safer walking around the shop knowing that this is enclosed and the fumes are going out and it's just overall a better work environment. One of the huge advantages of these diode lasers is they're just small. Granted, you do have a smaller cutting area, but Atomstack does offer one size larger with this and I believe it cuts 30 by 30, which is pretty dang big and competes with a lot of the CO2 lasers when it comes to size. But this one I think is 20 by 16, I'll have to double check, but it's still relatively small and it doesn't weigh much. I can literally pick this thing up without much effort and I could throw this in the bed of my truck, take it to my friend's house and cut some stuff out or engrave it quick and just bring it back home. There is no chance you're doing that with an 800 pound, 100 watt CO2 laser. And then the size of this takes up just roughly is about 36 inches by 30 inches by we'll just say 12 inches. So that's a huge advantage to these things. This thing's most likely gonna live on my wall. I'll put two screws in the wall and then kind of just hang it up there and this stuff will just go on a shelf when I'm not using it. So if you're in a garage environment or a smaller workspace, these diode lasers are gonna kind of take the cake when it comes to sizing and getting it to fit in your area. And when it comes to size, a CO2 laser is always gonna take up a much larger footprint in your space. So with the chiller attached and the extractor coming off the back, this thing totals about 80 inches long by 50 inches wide. So it's going to be really hard to just tuck this away in your shop or even get it into a basement if you don't have a large door frame. You can't just get this through a regular door. And this is the honeycomb bed of our Laguna laser. It cuts 36 by 24. So ease of use for the diode lasers and like setup, I would say I spent probably a half day setting this up. It probably took me like an hour to get it all put together and tinkering around with it. 
and then you know another hour or so in the software just kind of figuring things out and then you know kind of figuring out cut settings it does come with a flash drive with a bunch of different recommended settings on it for a bunch of different types of materials so that's a huge plus when it comes to these i'm sure x2 and the other brands had that same like little cut list too and it's very easy to use. This can run off Lightburn. There's also some other programs you can use, but I prefer Lightburn. That's what we run on our CO2 laser. And I would say ease of use of this thing is pretty dang easy, especially when it comes with that list of recommended settings to use. You pretty much just plug those in, try them out. Maybe you have to make some tweaks, write that down, and you're pretty much good to go. The A70 does have autofocus, and this is what I used every time I used it. All of the higher end CO2 lasers should have autofocus as well. And for alignment, it's super easy. There's a trace feature in Lightburn and it simply just outlines where it's gonna cut and you're pretty much good to go. For the A70, I did have to set an offset as the laser pointer's not directly underneath the cutter head. But for my CO2 laser, this trace feature works the same way and they also make cameras to make alignment that much easier. And then ease of use for the CO2 laser. These are gonna be a little bit more tricky to get into and figure out. So if you get over a 50 watt machine, it's gonna come on a semi in a big crate and you gotta get that thing off the pallet into your area. And we had to level the bed of ours, and we also had to adjust the mirrors. But adjusting the mirrors is what's gonna be tricky. It probably took me a couple hours the first time I did it, and it's a little bit frustrating once because you, you gotta figure out how to turn those screws and get that mirror to align perfectly. And it does get easier as you go on. I could probably do it in like 15, 20 minutes now. But those mirrors have to be aligned perfect or you're gonna lose a ton of power. It comes out of the tube, bounces off one, bounces off another mirror, and bounces off this mirror and shoots down into the work surface. So those mirrors need to be perfectly aligned or you're gonna lose a ton of power. Or if you're trying to cut out a circle over here, it'll cut out fine, but this back corner might not cut out at all if your mirrors are all out of whack. And that's just one thing you're gonna to have to keep in your maintenance schedule and make sure those mirrors stay clean. Because even if they get dirty over time, you're gonna to have to clean them off because you will lose more power than you think. And which is, that's what's nice about the diode laser is it doesn't have all those mirrors. You still have to clean the lens, but there's less maintenance overall. And then our CO2 laser also has a cut list. If you just scroll down to the bottom of the product sheet, it shows all the stuff it can cut or engrave. And if you just click on it, it gives you a starting point. And I pretty much used these to start out and then I made adjustments from there to really hone it in. If I were to buy one of these or recommend one of these as any sort of like business venture, I would get at least a 30 watt and above. This is a 70 watt and you can drop it down to a 35 watt. And the more power you have, the faster you can do it, the less time you're tinkering around, and the more stuff you can cut. So I would get, if you're trying to like run any sort of business, I would go 40 watt and higher. But also, if you're just doing light engravings, then smaller lasers, lasers will be just fine. As for brands, I don't know enough about these brands to really recommend a whole lot. I do know a lot more about the CO2 lasers. So this Atom Stack laser, laser seems very well built. It was easy to use and set up. We also have an X-Tool 20 watt. And compared to this laser, I mean, obviously it's not a fair comparison because that's a lot smaller laser, but the packaging of the X-Tool was a lot better than this. The instructions were better than the X-Tool. It came with these nice little books, these little, all these little guides. You can see the packaging. They just put a lot more time and thought into the pack packaging and setup of the X-Tool. I haven't tried any other dial lasers, but the X-Tool seems like a great laser and these Atom Stacks seem pretty well built as well. So then overall for pricing on these, you're gonna look at spending anywhere from $1,200 to $2,500, kind of depending on the size and the power. So I went ahead and put these lasers head to head and to give my CO2 laser the benefit of the doubt, I haven't checked the mirrors in a while. So, you know, give or take a little power on the CO2 laser. But overall, they were pretty dang similar. But one thing you need to keep in mind about these CO2 lasers is you can only run them about 70%. And it says right on the laser, don't run over 25 mega amps or whatever it is because you'll drastically reduce the life of your tubes versus this one in the manual, all the cutting they say to run at like 90%. So I think you can run these a little bit harder. They cut about the same. So I single passed all this stuff with the same exact setting. So this cut the same as this, but I could have tweaked the settings to cut this out faster. So all these took 50 seconds. And then on my CO2 laser, this took 16 seconds. This was, I did two passes and this was 22 seconds. So these were both quarter inch MDF. And then I did multiple passes and this took 50 seconds, multiple passes and this took just over a minute. And then this was a little bit bigger and this one took 50 seconds as well. So overall, I'd say they're relatively similar. 
And you can see just how slow the diode moves when it's cutting, but you can speed this up to get less charring if you're able to cut through or just do multiple passes like I did on my CO2 laser. I believe I did three or four passes on this pine to get all the way through it, but you can see it's a lot cleaner cut with less burning on the outsides compared to the diode. I'm very impressed with the cutting capabilities of the diode. It's quite impressive for the price. But if you really dial it in, you can get the CO2 lasers to cut a little more efficient. And then when it comes to engravings, I messed around a little bit to try to get a similar depth and color. So this is the CO2 laser and it took seven minutes, 30 seconds. And this is the A70 and it took 10 minutes, but it's a little deep. So I probably could have sped this one up as well. So the CO2 laser also has different lens options. There's like a four inch cutting lens. I think I have the, I think it's a two and a half general use lens. And then they have a shorter lens for engraving to get more detail. So that's something else that I don't have that you could use to improve your CO2 laser. So as far as materials, with a diode laser, you are going to be able to cut most of the same things that you can with a CO2 laser. The disadvantage with the diode is that you cannot cut clear materials, such as clear acrylic, unless you put a film over it or they offer different types of sprays that you can put on and then wash off once you're done. So another advantage to the diode laser is that you can etch into most types of metals, whereas a CO2 machine, you can only etch into coated metals such as the anodized wallets or the tumblers. So it really depends on what type of material you are using the most in your shop as to which laser would be the best for you. So let's talk a little bit about running a business because I feel like a lot of these laser companies are kind of marketing the lasers as if you just buy one and you're just gonna magically start printing money. Justin and I have been running a business since 2017, mostly selling stuff on Etsy and our website. I by no means want to crush anyone's dreams. It's just, I want people to have realistic expectations going into starting a business. There's way more that goes into it than just buying a $1,200 laser or a $500 3D printer. You're gonna to have to buy shipping materials, learn how to ship, learn how to run your business, learn how to market, get a website, learn how to run Etsy. There's so much more to it than just buying a tool. And this is just from a business point of view. I think these diode lasers are amazing as a hobby. Pretty much anyone over 20 watts gonna do pretty much anything you want and you're gonna have a ton of fun with it. I just don't like the picture that's being painted that it's just super easy to run a business. As a business owner myself, it's not easy. If this is something you're interested in, go on Instagram or wherever and find people who are actually running a business, reach out to them and ask how their experience has been starting a business, maybe get some tips and tricks. Don't listen to the people trying to sell you a course or showing how they made millions of dollars on Etsy or whatever the case may be. But what's nice about these diode lasers is they're relatively affordable. Say you buy one for $1,200 and spend a little bit more money to start your business and it's just not for you or you can't get any traction, you could easily sell this on the marketplace for at least half of what you paid for it. So all I'm saying is tread lightly. It's 100% possible. And if it's something you want to do, I highly recommend you try it and chase your dream. Um, I would be curious on longevity of the diode lasers. This isn't something I've ran a ton. I literally just got it, so I'm not super familiar with it. It states that diode lasers last 25,000 hours to 50,000 hours, depending on how hard you run it. And then the CO2 lasers have glass tubes in them, which generates the laser. The, the average person buying one is gonna most likely have a glass tube laser. They do make metal RF laser tubes, which last a lot longer. And I think you can actually recharge them. But for argument's sake, we're gonna say the average laser has a glass tube, which lasts 1,000 to 5,000 hours. I'm sure there's some variants in there. We've went through one laser tube and we got about a thousand hours out of it, but we mostly do cutting. So if you're just doing light engravings, that laser tube is going to last longer. And then here's the laser tube for our CO2 laser. It is a Reese tube, which is a pretty good brand in the world of CO2. And you can see here, the bigger the tube, the more it costs. So ours would be $1,000. And then your diode head should last quite a while, but I found this one on the Adam Stack website and it's about $690 for a 33 watt diode head. So if you do need to replace your diode head, I would assume it'd cost about half the price of your machine. So diode laser versus CO2 laser, which one's better? Which one has the edge here? So it's gonna really depend on what you're doing, but these diode lasers are getting super impressive. You can get into a diode laser for $1,200 to $2,500. Again, I would budget for an enclosure. You don't wanna be breathing in or looking at them laser beams, but I would love to see one of these come out in a hundred watt that comes with like a nice metal enclosure. But until then, it's hard to say. I would probably buy one of these over a 50 watt CO2 laser. Unless you're cutting a bunch of your clear acrylic or something, then this just can't do it. But if you're looking to start a business where you're gonna be running that thing all day long, every day, I would get a 100 watt or 150 watt CO2 laser. But again, those are so expensive. You're looking to spend 6,000 to $15,000 on something like that. And these are 
you know, I'd say 3,000 if you get a decent enclosure and something like, you know, some sort of exhaust system and all that stuff going. And use this until you can afford a larger CO2 blazer unit. And then I think I'd probably keep this and not even sell it just because they're so versatile. I can't wait to see what these evolve into. I'm so excited about these diode lasers, especially after they got over 40 watts. I think once they get up to 100 watt and come with nice enclosures and everything, they're really going to be competing with the CO2 lasers. But as of now, I think the higher end CO2 lasers like uh, Thunder Laser, Aeon, and those companies are crushing it with the lasers. But those are very expensive machines. So it really depends on you and your budget. Some people can't fit a giant CO2 laser in their garage or work area, but these diode lasers are pretty small. So it really boils down to your budget and how much space you have in your setup. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We do have a Patreon if you want to support the channel. Go check that out. And we also have CNC and other laser files available on our website. So thanks for watching.